Hello and welcome, my name is Ryan, I'm also known as RM2K Dev. In the last video, we got our player sending their positional data back to the server. In this video, we're going to deal with that data and notify all the other clients connected to our game of the update in position to the player. So, we're going to start this video on our server side and we're going to jump into client.js because we need to add some handler functions. Now the first function that we need to add is going to deal with broadcasting information to everyone on the room that you're currently in, except to the current client, because the current client already knows about their position. We don't need to send their position back to them. That would really confuse the game and make it kind of weird. So let's start by adding a new uh, function in the area that we labeled client methods. So I'm gonna say this dot broadcast room equals function and it's going to take a parameter of packet data oh one thing i should do is increase my font size i'll do that now okay uh so this dot broadcast room and it takes a a parameter of packet data so what we need to do and i believe no, we won't need underscore to do this because we already know that we already know the current client. So what we can do is we can say maps. We need to find out the current map. Well, we already know what the current map is because we have access to client, which is defined at the top here. Client equals this. So we can say client uh, client dot user dot current underscore room, which is the current room in our maps array dot clients. Because if you remember each map, stores a list of all the current sockets that are connected to that map. And we do that using the enter room and exit room functions. We haven't created exit yet, but we might create it if we get into um, dealing with multiple rooms and teleporting between rooms, we may add that. So dot clients dot for each. And we need a function to deal with each of these clients. So I'm gonna call this other client. So we basically now we have a a way to loop through all of the clients. We need to check to see if the current client is the same as the other client. So we can use the username to do that since they're unique. So we just say if other client dot user dot username not equals client dot user dot username because we don't want it to be equal. Then if this if this is true, then we can send that other client the data that we're trying to broadcast. So we can say other client dot socket dot write and we'll just write to that socket the packet data that we passed into this function so now we have a way to send data to everyone who's on the same room as us but not ourselves if that makes sense so now that our handler function is done let's jump into our initializers zero zero packet models where we're going to create our packet model for the positional data so we're going to say pos and then we'll have a colon is new parser dot skip one because we always skip the first byte if you remember because that is the size byte um, this is always going to contain a command variable so let me add that in there we go um, however the two parameters that we used on this one were 32 bit uh, signed integers. So we're going to say int 32 uh, le, I think le stands for little, little endian. Um, you can have a quick Google about endianness. Uh, we won't get into that in this video because it's kind of complicated. Um, and we'll pass into that the string options just because we pass those into everything. I don't think you need them when you're dealing with numbers, but we'll pass them in there anyway. And this is going to be target underscore x and we also need target underscore y so now we have a packet that can deal with the incoming data from the client let's jump into our packet.js and head down to around about line 65 if you've been following this uh character for character if not it is just the interpret function where we're going to add some info we're going to add some handling for our pos packet so i'm going to add a new case to our switch statement here and this is going to be case POS. So if, if the server received a POS packet, then we need to extract the data from the packet. And we're going to be using the POS packet model to, to do that with the data packet that is passed into our interpret function. Um, since we are inside of the interpret function, which has access to C and C is the client, 
then we can update the client's position and store that information in the database. Now, again, this is not the optimal way to do this. We're going to do it because it works and it works fairly easily. Um, it also works fairly simply as well. And the whole point of this is, is just to get you guys to understand how server architecture is working between a client and a server. So what I'm going to do here is another one of those situations like don't save the user's password as plain text because you're going to get hacked and that's bad news. Um, very similar situation, but I'll explain how we can refactor this later. So I'll say c.user dot pos underscore x is going to be equal to data dot target underscore x and we'll do the same for, for position y c dot user dot pos underscore y equals data dot target underscore y semicolon this is the line that i am not happy with but we're going to put it here just for now so, so that we can deal with it later and that is c dot user dot save you might un, you might be under you might be asking yourself why is that bad well Consider this, every time the player moves, we update their position and then we save that information back to the database. We really don't want to do that. What we really want to do is have this save occur probably in the logout function in the uh, this dot end. So when the client socket ends, we can save their user. We could easily just add that in here, client dot save, something like that. But I'll leave that up to you guys to figure out how to do it. I've given you the direction um, so you guys know where you need to head with this. Uh, now it's up to you to actually optimize it and get it to work nicely. And I'll probably, when I finish this tutorial series, come back and do a round of optimization refactoring um, just to get it working a little bit smoother. Now we're gonna use the function that we just created on the client, and that is the broadcast room function. So now we can say c.broadcastroom which takes a parameter of packet data. So we're gonna use our packet.build helper, which takes an array of uh, parameters, and that's going to be a POS packet as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna send back to everyone on the map, hey everyone, look at me, I've just moved. Please update your screens accordingly. That's basically what we're saying. So the POS packet is gonna send back POS. It's also gonna send back c.user.username. Since that's our unique key, that's what we'll be using to identify which player to move. Then we also need to send back the target X and target Y position. So if we say data.target underscore X and data.target underscore Y, I believe that is it. Let me just confirm. Yes, that is it. Um, we'll be sending that information back to the to all of the other clients except for ourselves because we've already moved on our screen because we've we've dealt with that uh, using the local client. So in this way, if your if your internet has a little bit, it's a little bit sketchy and it drops out and then it reconnects, the game will probably handle that because the client is going to move and then the server is going to update later. So a bit like in you know World of Warcraft or Ragnarok Online or some other game like that, when the network drops out a little bit, you can still move around, um, and when the network comes back. It's just all these POS packets will just flood back in and everything will move around until it's in the state that it should be in. And finally, in this function, just end that with a semicolon. I'm just going to say console.log and we're going to log out data just so that we can see what is actually being sent to the server and what is coming in from who. So now our server deals with the POS packet and it sends it back to all the other clients. Let's bring up the terminal start up the server and have a look at the console and i'm going to jump into our game maker project now and i'm going to make a new client just have a quick connection and we'll see what happens in the console so if i log into the server and i take a step you'll see the server has interpreted a pos packet it would have successfully sent it to all the other clients on the map and you can see our target x and target y positions will be updating accordingly if i can get them on the screen there we go so let me scroll down there you go so we're at 192 256 if i take a step to the right the y should stay the same 256 and the x should update accordingly so that is how we move around in the next video we'll be working on our network player which is what we use to represent other players in the in the game yeah, so thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to give this video a like and leave any comments in the section below. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And also, if you can, jump back to episode one and give that episode a like as well. Like I said in the 
last video, every single like that that video gets is just going to increase the visibility of this series and hopefully help some other indie game developers. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in part 14, I believe it will be 13 or 14. I'm not 100% sure on that. I will check when I finish recording this. <laughs> thank you guys. Bye.